Hi all and welcome back. So in today's tutorial we'll be looking on some of the cheats on the system properties, okay, which may be useful for you in your day-to-day -day activities. So as you know, system property is a place where you can store some hard-coded values which you can use across multiple scripts okay so we use system property quite frequently right but while using system property a lot of people don't know how to make a maximum utilize utilization of the same so today we'll be looking on few of the cheats okay which i am using in my projects okay with respect to system properties and probably you can also use it in your own project <clears throat> so let's jump into this so as you can see on my screen this is my personal development instance and for today's tutorial we'll be using a background screen don't drop me a comment why my background screen is looking black okay it's because of the plugin which I extension which I installed on my chrome which is as a new extension so let's let's for example so first of all how we face those oh uh, first of all let's get some gather information let's gather some information so first of all system property gets stored in the sys properties table if you are not aware about this uh, then this is a table where you have to look for system properties okay now whenever we we want to pull any properties value right so the syntax for that is js dot get property okay and inside curl inside round braces you can pass the property name for which you want to find the value so for example i have defined this property group group string property so if i copy this out and if i paste this in the curly braces then ideally it should return the value for the same so i will give it as mm, what i should variable prop equal to js dot get property and then I will do js dot info and in that we will simply display this prop so if I run this out it gives the value which is stored in the script okay you can we can match it out so this is the value which we are getting but a lot of people don't know that if this property is empty right so as per the best practice we should have some default value set uh, for this property because this property will be you you will be used in your script throughout your script okay and if it has a null pro null value then it may break your code so as a best practice you should have some default value when some value doesn't exist so how exactly how generally we can do that we can do if prop if not prop okay if not prop then we can simply define some default value like then prop equal to abc okay something like this now what happens key if if i delete this values out right if i clear this value for this property let me do that so i will just clear this value out and i will save it and if we execute this property it will not return null instead of that it will return abc which can be a valid value right so if i give this js dot info then prop okay and i'll just comment this out so let's see what result we get so now we get abc why abc because if i remove this out over there over here the prop has empty value so whenever it's empty you can you can you are replacing it with abc but you don't have to write so, so much of code right to get what you want okay you can simply define one additional attribute so i will just clone it out or uh, comment it out and with the property you can pass the second argument which will be a default value okay so what how exactly it works if the first argument property has empty return 
then it will consider this second at argument as a default value so i will give def okay and now if i run this out so now you can see uh, as a default only it took def why because this property has an empty value okay i will re restore this property out now in this property you can do multiple things okay you don't have to pass only single value all the time okay you can put a json a comma separated string and then you can play around it in your script for example let's take an example if we have defined a json okay in this for in this particular example if you see i have defined a json first with the society of the first group and second is the society of second group and now i have to define a logic that i want to pull all the members who are belonging either to the first group or the second group so i i will not create two properties instead of that i have created one json with two keys first and second and now let's see how we can utilize this out in our code so the first and the foremost thing we have pulled out the property okay i will just pass it out i will just remove the below thing i don't think it's required okay so the first and the foremost thing is i will pass it out this string because it gets stored into string right so i'll pass it out into json so json json dot pass and then i will put this logic inside that okay and also i will change the property name so you want to use this property so i'll just copy this out and put it over here okay and now what the use case is we want to pull the group member which belongs to either of the group either first group or second group so how you can define the logic for the same so what you can do variable yeah yeah group member equal to new slide record slide record on which table i hope you know the answers so the group the table is says underscore user underscore gr member Okay. Now we have done the query on this. We will do the query. So gr group member dot add query add query and in query I will give group because this is a backend name of a group in the side in that table. Group equal to now we have passed it out into JSON right this particular thing. So I can simply do prop dot first because i have stored it that way out okay dot i will give and or query because i want to do the or operation or condition and i will give the second query which will be prop is prop dot second so what this code will do it will look for the members which are either part of group first or because we have added add or condition part of group second okay and then i will do gr member dot query and let's how we want to display it out so let's do while only while gr dot yeah group member dot next i want to display the name so it will be like what is the name in that table gr group member dot user i'm 
I'm not pretty sure. So if I execute it out, so it okay. I'm displaying over here, right? I'll just copy this out, paste it over here, and what I will do, I'll just go to this table. So see the backend name for. TR member at a lengthy name. So let's see how exactly it's stored. So the backend name is user only. So we will we can give this as I will copy this out from here. Control X to V control x dot get display value of what user and and let's see how exactly it looks so you can see all this are the members of this to grow atf service level management or johnson jock wilson and all right so this is how you can use the property which is stored at JSON. Now let's look into one more example. So in this example, what we'll be doing, we'll be pulling the property. Uh, the use cases you can consider. We want to use it as AND query. Okay, now we have looked into OR. So OR, let's go with the OR query, okay? So we'll check with uh, how exactly we can extract it out. A group members the similar use case only okay using a comma separated string okay so I've created one more property as you can see over here which we were using group string property so over here group name the similar same group name uh, group societies are stored in a comma separated format okay so now let's work on the same so over here how you can do we will go I will just first copy this property name. We can go to the background script. I will replace the property name out. Let's keep its default value as is. Okay. But as now it's stored in the comma separate string, we don't need this passing to the JSON, right? And we will have this group members only. And now what you can do instead of this, we will be replacing this out only. So you can simply do group. I'll just remove this entire thing out. Group. And now we will use an in operator. So group in. Now we have we already have a society stored, right? In a copy of the string. We have to just pass that out. So we have to just do the prop. And it should return the same result. Okay. So if I run this out, I mess comma over here. If I run this out now, as you can see, it's returning the same result. So in today's tutorial, what we have seen with respect to property, first of all, how we can handle the exception where the property which you have defined has a null value or it's empty. Okay, so how you can set a default value. Then how you can store a property into a JSON format and then utilize that particular JSON into your script to extract some data and the third is like how you can store the property into string format comma separate string and how you can drive the operations around the same so this is all uh, for the today's today if you have other use case where you uh, which we can formulate okay using the uh, properties yes properties okay or system properties okay please drop a comment on the same till then stay safe stay happy and have a nice day thank you